Okay, so part two, we're going to start off on 50. So when we're graphing each equation, hold on. Okay, so back at it. Um, so we're looking at a number 51. So if you look what I did, what I did was I divided everything by 2, or negative 2, so I got y equals negative one-half x plus one. Okay, so what that gives me then is the uh, equation in slope-intercept form. So my intercept is zero, one, my slope is one-half. Okay, now if this is on a test, I will give you the actual graph to graph this on, or tell you that you need to graph it on a graph, and I'm gonna want it to be precise. Please understand that for the sake of the review and for the sake of me showing you kind of how to do it, uh, that I'm assuming that you guys know how to graph from slope-intercept. If you don't, it's totally okay. Just ask a question about it in class. And so I'm just giving you an idea of what they should look like. I actually do want you guys to actually go ahead and graph these, though. So moving on. So that brings us to number 56. So here, what we're doing is we're describing the transformations of the parent function. And this is kind of the first real bit of Algebra 2 we're doing. This is the first thing uh, that is different that you guys didn't really do in Algebra 1. There was some work on this with absolute value, but in general, uh, specifically with um, parent functions and things like that, this is a first time for most people. So... Remember, if it's the, make sure that you have the notes. Currently, they're up to the left of the screen in the classroom. If, for some reason, when you go and look there, they're not there, make sure you get them from someone else. So because the negative one is inside the parentheses, uh, as opposed to if you look at number 57, that plus two is outside of the parentheses, that negative one is going to move it one unit to the right I know that seems counterintuitive, that if it's a negative one, it should move it to the left. But look at what you have to do to get a zero point. You have to add one in there. Go ahead, Thespis. Okay, so one unit to the right. 58. So this is a negative f of x. So this isn't um, just where you're negating the x, but you're negating the entire function. And what that does is it reflects it over the x-axis, okay? So it's going to flip the entire thing upside down. So if I had a parabola, like so, and let's say that's what my original function was. If this is f of x, then negative f of x would look something like that. Okay, flips it over the x-axis. If it's this, if you look at number 60, um, 60, and this is if this was still my parent function over here, 60 would look something like this. It would flip it over the y-axis. So it would look like that. Okay? So describe the transformation of f of x that produces g of x. So we know that f of x is 2x minus 1. How do we get to 1 half x plus 1? Well, we have to ask ourselves, 2 times what equals 1 half? And the answer is 1 fourth. So we get 1 fourth of f of x. Okay? Now, look what's going to happen. We need to add something else on the side. Now, if we just do 1 fourth of f of x, we're going to get negative 1 fourth on the end, because we go one-fourth times, because watch what happens. If I do this whole thing times one-fourth, I get one-half x minus one-fourth. Well, we need to turn this negative one-fourth to a positive one, so we're going to add one and one-fourth, or five-fourths. No, no, why not? Okay. Same general idea for the next one g of x, we divide by 2, so we're going to go 1 half f of x, that's the a, if you have your notes out in front of you, and you guys, 
You need to have your notes out when you're doing this. You need to have your notes out when you're doing the test. No one, well at least not me, is expecting you the first time you go through this to memorize everything completely. It's why I let you have your notes, okay? So take advantage of that. But study them. Look at your notes. Interact with your notes, okay? One half f of x minus one half. So that's just that one half that we tag on the end. Okay? So then we have number 65. It says the graph of y of x is stretched vertically by a factor of 3. It is then translated up one unit. So stretching it vertically by a factor of 3, we're going to multiply x by 3. We then translate it up one unit, so we get plus 1. Now notice that because of the order that we did it, if it said it's moved up 1 and then translated by 3, or stretched by 3, we'd get something else. Okay? If we had moved it up one first, we'd get y equals x plus one. If we then ver vertically stretched it by a factor of three, we'd then multiply that by three. So we'd get y equals three x plus three. So it's important the order that we do it then. Okay, we're almost there. So we're gonna now sketch the graphs again I'm wanting you guys to be a bit more precise than I am here, okay? Because on a test, you're actually going to have a graph, and so you're going to need to be able to enter those points to ensure that you're doing it right, okay? So here, graph each inequality. Now, when we start these, what we want to do is we want to graph them like we would normal, y equals negative x plus 5. So we have a point at 0, 5, that's our y-intercept slope of negative 1. But it's an inequality. So remember, with an inequality, what we're going to be doing is shading the half plane. We're either going to shade above the line or below the line. If you're not sure which to do, pick a point and see whether or not it makes it true. So what we're going to do here is we do a dotted line. Why? Because it's y is less than x, negative x plus 5. And we shade down. So one of the reasons we shade down, if I didn't know better, what I'd do is I'd pick, let's say, I want to pick this point right here, 0, 0. So I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to go 0 is less than negative 0 plus 5. 0 is less than 5. Is that true? Yes, it is. So that means I want to shade the area, the half plane, that has that answer in it. Okay? Moving on. So this is number 74, so we have y is less than or equal to 3x minus 1. Because it is a less than or equal to sign, we're going to keep it. And then we shade underneath, because y is less than the function. For number 75, we have x plus 3y equals 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into slope-intercept form. So I am going to subtract x from both sides and then divide by 3. That's going to give me x where y is greater than negative 1 third x plus 4. I put an equal sign in there. Let me go change that. y is greater than. So my intercept is 0, 4. My slope is negative 1 third. It is dotted because it is simply a greater than and the shade up. For some reason I decided to shade down there, but it's not. It's up. I was wrong. So we're going to shade up here. Now watch this, because watch what happens if I if I had shaded up and I had checked my work and I plugged zero zero in there as a test point. I'd get zero plus three times zero is greater than 12. That gives me 0 plus 0 is greater than 12, or 0 is greater than 12. Well, that's just a fat y, so we're not going to do that. Okay? Moving on. So now we have y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x. So we know that that's the general graph for the absolute value of x, where that right there is actually 0, 0. Okay, it's that v. 
and we are shading up because it is greater than or equal to. Whoa. Okay. So when we have y is greater than x plus the absolute value of x plus 2, we kind of do the same thing. That plus 2 sits there on the inside is actually going to move the entire graph two units to the left. And we do a dotted V because it is greater than and not greater than or equal to. And then, so that's our vertex, negative 2, 0, and we fill up. 80, we're going to move two units to the right because we have a negative 2. Because look at what happens. If I put a positive 2 in there, my point is then y is less than or equal to um, the absolute value of 0, okay? So y is less than or equal to the absolute value of 0. So the graph at that point, the point that I put in there is 2, 0. And it is less than or equal to, so we're not going to do a dotted line, but we're going to do a solid line. And again, because it's less than... I don't know what I was thinking when I did this, but we, we're going to color in underneath. Because y is less than or equal to that. And again, you can pick any test point. So here, if I wanted to pick 0, 0, plug that in, 0, 0. So if 0 is less than or equal to the absolute value of 0 minus 2. That's going to give me 0 is less than or equal to the absolute value of negative 2. Or 0 is less than or equal to 2, which is true. And last one, we have 81, y is greater than the absolute value of x plus 2. Now here, because the 2's on the outside of the um, absolute value bars, we're just going to move that up two spots. So we have 0, 2. We have a dotted line because it is greater than and not greater than or equal to. And then we are simply going to, this time, color the inside because y is greater than x plus 2. So here, if I wanted to use the origin, 0, 0 as my test point, notice that 0, 0 isn't filled in. So I'm going to go 0 is greater than the absolute value of 0 plus 2. So because we're using a point that's not on that shaded half plane, we should get an incorrect answer. 0 is greater than 0 plus 2. 0 is greater than 2. Well, it's not. Okay? So we know we did it right because we checked because we checked with our test point and our test point was outside of the shaded area, which means it should give us an incorrect answer, which it did. Hope this helped. Remember, study your notes. Ask questions in class. This is not a replacement for being an active class member. Rather, it's to help you when I can't. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.